Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing the sew along for the Lunaria dress from Mood Fabrics. As I said in the last video, Mood Fabrics has a website where they offer many, many different patterns. And I've had the opportunity to be able to print off at least 10 of them. And I'm going to make some of my favorites. So this is the start of my mini Mood collection. I wanted to start off with the Lunaria dress because I think it's going to be perfect for any kind of holiday event that I have coming up. Whether I want to wear a little dress to be able to go out to a nice dinner with my husband or a Christmas party if we have one coming up. I think it's just a nice little touch for the holidays. So if you saw the end of my last video, I went over the pattern pieces and what you would need for this particular sew along. You would need at least three to six yards of fabric, depending on what changes you want to make to the actual garment. Um, for example, I lengthened my um, dress by three inches in the front and in the back, just because I thought it was a little too short for me. Um, in addition to that, you're going to need buttons. You're going to need threads. Um, I am going to put all of the pattern pieces you would need um, the type of fabric you can use on it, which listen, this is the time that you can pull out, you know, your fancy fabric, or if you just want to stick to your hundred percent cottons, that works as well. I'm going to put all of that information in the description, just in case you want to be able to sew along with me. If you do, I also would suggest you go watch the last video because I go over, um, like I said, all of the pattern pieces and then also any kind of interfacing you may need for it. So we're going to get started. The first part of this video, I am going to do the back piece, the front piece to show you how to, um, what the front is supposed to look like because the whole front of the garment is all buttons. So I'm going to go show you what part of um, the front that you need to interface. And then from there, we're going to put the dress together. I don't think this it's going to be a hard make, but I wanted to make sure, especially for this one, to go over all the instructions that they put on the website because sometimes if you're a new sewer, it's not as clear if you don't know what you're doing. So this is the opportunity for you to sew along with me. I normally, in my sew alongs, I go over any kind of finishes that I'm going to do. And on the move patterns, they do suggest sometimes French seams or anything like that. If it comes up and they suggest for seams, I'm going to show you once how to do it. And then after that, of course, you should be able to complete it from there. I'm not going to do French seams on all of my um, garments because for me, sometimes French seams are just too time consuming. And if it's something that I am not going to wear a lot, then I'm just going to go ahead and sew it up and use my serger um, to finish my seams. So let's get started. Okay, so you want to grab your back piece. You are going to take your yoke. Okay. And right sides together, you want to match up your notches. Now make sure to transfer your notches. That's going to be important for making sure that this does what it needs to. All right. So right sides facing. I'm going to match up my notches to pick a different one. Okay. So I'm match up my notches here. I get it, everything to match. Okay. 
okay? And then I'm gonna match up my notches down here. Right. Once your notches matches up, I'm gonna go ahead and pin everything else into place. Now, I want to make sure I have enough pins for everything, so I don't want anything to screw in. So the difference is when you're doing this, according to the instructions that you get on Moo's page, you are going to take the back piece and you're going to gather it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my longest stretch, my longest needle stitch, It's going to be a five for me. And I'm going to make a gap right there. Now, you can do this by pleating, but for me, it's going to be just easier to gather it all together. Now, normally when you do gathers, and I have a blue thread so you can't see it a lot, you wanna do two rows. I'm not gonna do that because it's not a lot to gather for this section. So I'm just gonna pull one of my strings. I keep saying strings, threads, and I am going to gather gather this and like I said it's not a lot we're almost done with it true gathering you want to have your two different threads just gonna space out some you're gonna pull some of this in Okay, so it's all gathered in there, okay? So then I am actually going to pin this. So it calls the direction says to stay stitch. This together. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and pin my top. Well, no, I'm going to base it and then pin my top. So I'll make sure everything stays like I want to. All right. So you turn it over. That's how you want it to look. I know it's hard to see because it's that blue. All right. So I'm gonna base this together. Okay. 
And once again, basting is using your longest needle stitch. You're not gonna back stitch. This is the time to make sure everything is lining up where it's supposed to be. When well, you massage, you got a lot of fabric, so you just gotta make sure everything lines up. So we got that side done. So what we wanna do is we're going to end up sandwiching the other yoke piece together, all right? So I'm gonna take the other yoke piece and I wanna do I'm gonna do right side of my yoke piece to the wrong side of my back, all right? And then I'm gonna pin. And you can do notches. Make sure your notches line up. See, notch here, notch there. And I know everybody don't have to use as many pins as me, but it's my OCD. And I want to make sure all my threads are out of the way. And my notches are lining up. So all of your seams for um, most of Moon's patterns are going to be a half an inch. So I've already put my needle down where I want it. Just need to remember to go back. And you're going to stitch a half an inch and stitch in both sides together. Back stitch. So what I'm going to do now, 
I'm going to, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to search this. I'm going to press it. So I'm going to press everything up. So it's going to be nice and pressed. And then I'm also going to go ahead, since I'm going to my iron, I'm going to go ahead and work on where I'm going to put my buttons. Okay. So we'll. So when you go over to your machine, you want to press this back and you're going to do it twice. So you're going to press this back. Let me see what it says. I'm going to say it says an inch and a half. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you want to press I had to look for a minute you want to press this whole front half and you want to do it on both of your front creases back an inch and a half okay and it's basically where you have your interfacing and then from there you want to press it under a half an inch okay so then once you do that we'll be back so I was able to go to my machine. As you guys can see here, I folded under an inch and a half, okay? And then from the edge, I folded again a half an inch. And it should follow your markings. Let me bring it down so I can make sure you guys see it. Okay. It should follow your markings from the pattern, okay? So from there, you want to, you're gonna end up sewing this down, okay? And the best way that I've learned how to do that, I'm gonna make sure that everything is tucked under the bottom, but I'm using my edge foot, okay? Or your top stitch foot, because it allows me to make sure that my fold on the bottom of my fabric is sitting right on that edge. I move over, I move over my needle to just where I want it and I start from there. So I actually need to go back up. So every now and again, you just wanna check, make sure that everything is still where you want it. And I'm going to follow, I'm gonna put my seam gauge right there so I can make sure I'm following that if it okay all right this up just a little bit back stitch and then you want to go all the way down like I said make sure sometimes you go through and check to make sure it's still under there and you do all the way down and you want to do both of your front creases like this so if it makes you more comfortable you can always turn your fabric over and use the edge foot to be able to sew just to make sure that you're catching everything as i stated earlier mood fabric loves a french seam so if you don't know how to do a French seam. This is going to be a very quick way to learn how to do it. Now for me, I'm not going to use French seams in this project. I don't think for me it's necessary. I'm actually just going to finish my seams with a serger. Okay. But a French seam is a nice way to finish a garment and it's always good to have different tools in your bag that you can be able to pull out if you need it for anything. Um, normally for me, I like to use French seams on delicate garments um, to give it a nice touch. Okay. So to start off with, with a French seam, you want to make your wrong size face in now with this garment it's a little hard to tell what's the wrong side from the right side but you want your wrong size facing 
you also would want to add some seam allowance to your actual garment. For example, Mood has a half an inch seam allowance for all of their patterns. If I was you, I would go ahead and make that seam allowance a five eighths of an inch. So then you will have the room you need to be able to complete the French seams properly. So you want to take, like I said, wrong size together and go ahead and do it a half an inch. Okay. I'm going to put my gauge back. One of the things that's going to be really important in doing a French seam is going to be the power of you pressing. Pressing and sewing is always important and the French seam definitely needs you to press your garment to make sure that everything is nice and crisp. Now, because I only did a half an inch, I'm not going to cut much off. I'm only going to cut my seam allowance where it's going to be down to a fourth. Okay. Okay. So from there, you would want to go to your iron and you would want to press the seam very good. So you want to press it to the side and then once you get done pressing to the side, I will go back and press this. So as you see, I went to my machine and I pressed my seam and pressed it good. So what you're going to do next, you're going to have right sides together. Okay. Remember you had wrong sides together first. Now you're going to have right sides together and you're going to sew this a half an inch okay Okay, so remember, this is the inside of your garment. And as you can see, your seam allowance is completely closed in. And that's how you finish it. You go take it to the machine, you go and press your seam very well. Make sure that you always press your seams to the back of the garment, or if you're pressing the seam in the front to the center. And that is how you do a front seam. It's quick, it's easy, but like I said, for me, I love it and I normally use it on my more delicate fabrics, okay? So for many of the seams in this garment, the instructions given by Mood is to finish them with the front seam. Like I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use my good old serger. So now you want to take the front of your garment and you want to attach it to the back at the shoulders and at the sides. So you show a half an inch for the shoulders, a half an inch for the sides, and then finish your seam as any way you like it. You can use the French seam or you can use a good old serger. Make sure you take it to your 
iron and press your seams.